Hey everybody, welcome to Life with Gwen and Joe. And I'm standing here with my beautiful wife, Gwen. The skies are looking kind of turbulent, but it's 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 God talking to us. And I, I love it actually when it's like this. But it it's, feels it good, just might, it? just might rain on us here in a minute, so. <laughs> okay, today's show, thanks for joining us. We're talking about uh, Pentecost. It is a huge festival that God has for us. And so uh, stay tuned and we'll tell you a little bit about it. Life with God is so good. So come join us on this fun life where we put God in the center of everything. For Israel and for all the Jewish people, God had three times a year set aside that He ordained. He said, I want the men from everywhere around the world to, to get together. It was really cool, cool concept. It says three times a year, all your men must appear before the Lord your God at the place He will choose at the Feast of, here's the three times, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread is Passover, the Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles, which is in the fall, the Feast of Harvest. And it says, no man should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift and portion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. Really cool, that's found in Deuteronomy 16. And so we have uh, every year we meet, people come from all over the world, it's so cool. Babies are dedicated. That's cool, isn't it? Baby dedication. This baby dedication, the most gorgeous little kids, and all going to be raised uh, in this church uh, by godly parents, and that's very exciting. Oh, it's very beautiful. Oh, these children are such the fruit of uh, just the womb. It's such a blessing and a sign from God. Then we had around 40 confirmations of 13-year-olds. That's right, and tell them what happens when one of the 13-year-olds gets rushed. Oh my word. I mean, they decorate their room. It is truly like the rush of any sorority or anything. It's right. the biggest sorority because they get to get into the youth group at 13. And so their total room is decorated. Glitter everywhere, balloons everywhere. They they do the same thing for the guys. The guys rush the guys and the girls rush the girls and they get big brothers and then big sisters. And so they get very, very close. And so in confirmation, they get baptized and uh, they, they're, they're saying with their own lives that they want to give their life to God. So it's a, be a beautiful time of just stepping up and it's not your parents, but it's you. Which leads us, decision. which leads us into speaking of the baptisms. The yes. Place. And this was a very special thing because, uh, not, not only because I, I got to witness all of the baptisms taking place, but my mom, my dear mom, Diane, uh, got baptized and it's something that she'd wanted to do for a long time. So it was a fulfillment of a big wish of hers and it was very special for me. It was very special. There was a very large number of people getting baptized. And so um, we'll do the multiple baptisms where a lot will go under at the same time. But they're, all of them gave their testimonies and these testimonies are amazing. Three of the baptisms besides Diane uh, were my grandchildren and so i had gabriel garland and gwyneth all turning 13 and uh and wanting to give their life to god so th that's bigger to me than anything else they can do and they were they they even said that they were it was the most exciting week of their lives I'm excited to give all my heart, soul, and mind to God. And I want to live my life to please Him and to love Him and to adore Him above anyone or anything. And I'm ready to show that today. I'm so excited to be uh, baptized today. I want to give my life to God and put no idols before Him. I want to show God that I love Him first and I want to be under His authority all the way. I am just so excited to get baptized today because I get to show the world that I'm ready to do everything I can for the love of God and His kingdom. I absolutely, every year, it's just the same, the same feeling, and it's rich. It is truly, Pentecost is, they're all rich, all the festivals are rich, but this is, when you see that many people dying to give it all to God, and realizing that you can, you can give it all to God, uh, is, is the big thing. So I, 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 I see why Peter was saying that in Acts 2. Uh, he, it says, Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and all the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? 
do? And Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this promise is for you and your children. And then he, he was telling them to save themselves from this corrupt generation, save yourself. He pleaded with them, he warned them and pleaded and warned is what it's saying. And then it says that there were about 3,000 added to their number that day. So what's interesting to me is, you know, the Old, Old Testament, you don't see a whole lot of mention of baptism, but they were obviously very aware of baptism. That it wasn't like, what is baptism? Oh, well, do we go under the water? Do we do, I mean, you know, I mean, it's like they all, and in fact, when they went out to talk to John the Baptist, they, they said to him, they said, you know, um, you know, are you the prophet? You know, you're not. Then, then why are you baptizing? You know, they, they understood that with a message comes a, in, a complete immersion into that particular message. And I'm very grateful for Romans 6. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase by no means? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. We think about life being born and then you die. But when you're born again, it is the exact opposite and so when you are baptized, you are, you're baptized into a death and then into a life. See, it's a reverse. It's a reverse. We're going into a death. What is this baptism? Children can all understand it. They can understand it, that we're going in and then we are going to have a new life and we can have a new life. And it is written as simply as you know, Paul writing in Ephesians 4, you know, put off the old, put on the new. Put it off and then put it on. I mean, it ends, there has to be a death for there to be life. And so those struggling haven't really, you can go under the water and it's not a baptism. You're being baptized into a death. And so remember, it isn't the water that's saving you in there. It's a baptism and acceptance of a death. And this death is beautiful. And I don't even want the other. And that's when true death really can start being converted into a new life. It's when you hear these people saying, I don't want that, old, I want, and I want to go 100%. I want to go for it. And uh, so we'll be in this glorious sunshine over here, but um, uh, yes, doing six at a time, but every single one of these, even if it's six at a time, each one is equally as important. Everybody's in unison. We're going under. And we praise God for it because in our hearts, it reminds us of our own, our own death that we've embraced. So let's all embrace it even more as we go forth. The spiritual essence of watching somebody get baptized like that, especially the young kids, these, these young kids understand the dynamic and the symbolism of what it is to go under the water and to be reborn and, and come out a, a, a new spiritual being. And for them to understand that at such a young age is, is so impressive. And it, it, it far transcends the things that I knew when I was young. So I was just so proud of these young kids who are willing to dedicate their lives to Christ, to get baptized, to come up and to start their walk as adults in their faith. It's a very touching thing to watch that take place. Very, very beautiful. Uh, Pentecost is 
what a time to come together. The first harvest is what it is. You count off so many days, you know, past Passover, 50 days, and then that's when you have Pentecost. Pentecost meaning 50. So it's really cool that God wants us to get together. We're not legalistic about that, but we get to do it and get to imitate our background, our Judeo-Christian background, getting to imitate the Hebrews and then understanding why God wants us to do it. It makes all the sense in the world. So. We want to thank you for tuning in. We love doing our show. Gwen and I are here to answer your questions. If you have any comments or questions, please send them in. Ring the bell uh, and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time, right? Absolutely. <laughs> thank love you all. for joining us. Take care. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell so you are notified when we have a new video.